new song slash EP, hang up, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for my friend, your friend, everybody's friend, Scott Hellman. Woo! <laughs> so, Scott, um, it's been a while. Um, you forgot your keys, and yes. that's why you're back. Yeah. Left them on the couch, and you figured, why the hell not stop by and check in? Precisely exactly what happened. With? I actually don't have any idea where my keys are at this current moment. Yeah. And I'm going home tonight, and I'm having a house party. And I feel like it's I'm gonna awkward. get home. It's gonna suck. Like I, it's gonna be like 17 people on my porch, and I'm gonna be like, "Well, we're gonna party in the snow." Right, party in the snow. <laughs> but we'll see, but we'll see. It's so awesome to have you back. Yeah, thanks for having so, me. So last time you were here, you had just dropped video for a Ripple Effect, mm -hmm. and you were kicking wow, off. Wow, jeez, man. Yeah, man. It's like a whole lifetime ago at this point, Dude, and I didn't even have hangups written. Yeah, like, and. Crazy. You performed at Rockwood, I think, the yeah. following night. Yeah. So, how's everything been since then, man? It's been great, man. Yeah, I went to on a uh, tour with Vance Joy. It was awesome. It was so crazy. And, like, I mean, what's crazy, too, is, like, you know, when you're doing smaller clubs and theaters, you're doing, like, you know, 20 shows in three weeks or something like that. Mm -hmm. But this was, like, six shows. And then I went to Europe with him as well. We did, like, theaters and stuff, which was super cool. Um, and then I did my own little U.S. run, and it was cool to like go back to some places and see like more people coming out and stuff. So, yeah, just like keep building, and it's been dope. Yeah, last time you were here, you were talking about the experience being overseas and you know hitting places like Spain and Germany, and how people you didn't know resonated with your music, resonated with your music over there. How's it been since then? Because I'm pretty sure doing this tour and you know putting out. Hang up, she garnered a lot more attention and a lot more fans. So, how's that kind of been for you since, you know, ripple effect and everything in the beginning of the year? A tour is like a celebration, in my opinion, of the creation of a record, right? So, it's like to be able to go and, like, you know, meet new people and be like, this is my shit, you know, is really cool. And before I left, I had like 39,000 followers on Instagram. No, no, I had like 32, now I have like 40, and so it's like cool, it's like, oh, that this is actually working, and you, it's, the thing I love about social media, it is a little dark, but you know, when you play a show, you can literally see how many people were like, this is dope, mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that's really nice, and it's been really cool to, and I mean, what a great artist to be able to go on tour with, like, Vance Joy is one of my favorites, and I actually covered him when I was like a wee little boy, when he put out um, um, Riptide and Nah, and then I was just like on tour with this dude, and I was like, wow. So, dreams do come true, man. Yeah, man, it was, it's been really good. So. so, let's jump to the present or the media present. You know, you put out the video for Hang Ups in October. Yeah. And it was directed by Ben Mitchell. Yeah. That's correct. And I didn't know you suffered from vertigo. Well, sliding around in the yeah. moonlight, a lot of falling. That, that video, like, messed me up. Like, I woke up the next day. Are you okay? I am. I'm. I'm okay. But I. I. Re it really was like so visibly taxing, and I mean, it, it looks took like a it. While. So, tell people a little bit about you know the video if they haven't seen it yet, and yeah. what went into the concept and just the making of it. Yeah. Well, I really wanted to like. I felt like after I'd written Hang Ups, you know, there was some post production, but we didn't really change much. Like it was a like a like a guitar hook, a vocal, drums, and like. Bass, like that. There's not a lot of like balls and whistles, whistles in that song, um, which I love because it's super simple. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to try to write a super hooky, really simple song to complement the other two songs that I'd selected for the record. And um, yeah, when I put the video together, I was like, I feel like if we add another narrative, like you know, like some story. It's going to take away from how awesome it is that this song is just so simple. So initially what I wanted to do was just be upside down singing the song and like have a one take. And then we were like, okay, well, how are we going to film that? And I was like, let's just turn the camera upside down. And then we were like, well, there's this thing you can do. And well, I didn't figure this out, but the director did. Basically what we did is we built a room out of plywood and we put it on like a spool. So the 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 physical room like rotated mm. 360 degrees and all of the furniture in the room was nailed to the ground and the camera was hooked to it so it was also rotating so I mean if you go watch the video it looks like I'm climbing up the walls and dancing on the ceiling and I'm running all over the place when in fact it, the room is rotating and I'm like trying to like do all these moves and like sliding down walls uh, so it was really fun but 
Um, yeah, I really wanted to portray like that, the stress of that I was talking about in the song, which is, you know, about like, you say something to do, I mean, I think every dude, but probably every person knows the feeling of like, you're talking and you're like, digging yourself the biggest hole and you're like, please don't leave me. Just please don't leave me. Once I'm finished saying this stupid thing, just forgive me right away, because I, you know, so. Well, I'm stupid, I'm a man. You, you, you know what you're getting into. Yeah. But, awesome video, and, you know, the song itself really lends itself to the sound that you kind of cultivated, and it's very, very upbeat, but very, very soulful at the same time. And let's talk a little bit more about, you know, the EP with the same name. Three songs, right? Yeah. So, what went into you pretty much putting this project together because EPs now in a sense they're a little bit more lengthy but you did more of a traditional EP. Like yeah well the thing, the thing I love about EPs is that it gives you as an artist a chance to pivot and right. do different stuff and then you know like test the waters like I really wanted to write I wanted to uh, just try new stuff and, and like listen to current music and respond to it and I feel like a song like Lifeguard um, which is not only about empowerment I mean I guess it's female empowerment, but I mean, sometimes I listen to that song and I feel like I, I need that message, like, don't, you don't need a lifeguard, like, you can do this on your own, mm -hmm. dude, like, don't worry, you got this. Awesome, awesome. Talk about what it's like, you know, when it comes to the home now, because like you said, you're from Canada and I'm pretty sure the support and, you know, the attention has grown, mm -hmm. you know, you're already a big thing there. What's it like now, like, after the tour and, you know, the EP and the song, like, what's the home base like for you right now? It's really good. I mean, Hangouts was the best like radio debut that I had ever had. Like, awesome. It was really good for me. Yeah, we're going on a big tour, um, putting a, a really good show together. Like, just it keeps just kind of ramping up in a really natural way, um, and that's really exciting. Um, and yeah, I have like definite like label interest here in the states now, which is really nice. Oh. Um, so um, you know, it's just. I just feel like the team is really locking in and um, I don't know, I'm feeling really good these days. Like I, I had this kind of moment when I was out in Europe and I think it was because I was traveling so much. Right. But I was like, you know what, like fuck it, like, I'm just going to be myself. And it's not that I wasn't being myself, but I was like, I'm just going to like do what I want. And um, it's a weird, that's a weird feeling, you know, especially because I think when you're on tour, you're, you're doing a lot of the same things, you're like going from here to there same time like getting into a very band, very go to a green room play in front of 5,000 people <laughs> go back to the green room have a beer go back to the hotel I like the subtle flex of moving. no but you know, it, just but, but, 5, people but it, like it's so <laughs> amazing to do and it sucks when it starts feeling like a routine because it, it shouldn't be like it's it so, I'm so like work. so I was like man I don't know I looked in the mirror I woke up one morning I looked in the mirror I was like I need to change I got my hair cut I like just did all this stuff and like bought a whole new wardrobe like I just really like and then now I'm, I just feel like I'm so excited to get back in the studio because I just I just feel more like I can just take risks and I've just, I'm just excited to write again so there'll be new music soon awesome. and it's going to be uh, pop punk slash rap slash R&B slash t a spoken word record about the sun. Well, you are eliminating your Celtic demographic but maybe on the next go around. So, new music tour coming soon new lease on life uh new shoes are those new shoes no no they're old but i um i didn't really wear them much and i'm liking them so I'm new lease on life when it comes to new shoes yeah so all these new things you feel like you've really discovered yourself more as a person as an artist and you're starting to really cultivate who scott helmet is what is uh, yeah, I mean, it sounds weird because it sounds like I'm having like a midlife crisis. No, it also sounds like I don't know who I am. But it's more like I think I just really believe in, like I think the ro the role of an artist is to show people they can be free. Right. And so when you start when you start like kind of slugging off and you feel a little tired and you're on the road and you're like, man, everything feels the same. I that like really bugs me and I just I just was like, fuck. So now I'm kind of in this headspace of like, let's do fun stuff and take, take some risks. Yeah, but you're not necessarily rebelling against yourself, I feel like. No, yeah, I think that's what people think. 
being free means, but I don't think so. I think yeah. it's just like updating. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to be confined and you know restricted to yeah. what people may think you are as an artist because once you kind of live there, you have to be that all the time. Yeah, and that's not who we are as people. So no. why should you be that as an artist? I don't know. Don't don't keep him in a box. He's a peacock. He has to fly. <laughs> so, are there any more visuals coming off this EP, or? Um, I'm not sure. I think I'm gonna put out an album though, and then just rock that. Cause I'm I have so much, so many ideas, and I have. When I was writing Hangouts, I wrote a bunch of tunes with it. So I think I'm just gonna throw everything together and put an album together. Um, I have a really this was only I wrote recently that I really like though. So stay tuned. And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, once again, the marvelous, the magnificent Scott Hellman. Thank you for stopping by, man. Hangups is out now, the video and the EP, so make sure you download it. Make sure you go watch it. I am decent. This has been another exclusive Pop Dust interview. Make sure you follow us on all social media at Pop Dust. Make sure you visit our website, popdust.com, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube do us a favor, make sure you click that little bell at the top to be notified of all new content that's going up on the page, and we will see you soon. Peace. Bye.